Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In our last video on this acoustic build from Solo Music Gear, we did the grain filling on the back and sides. It looks good. It is sanded. It's ready to go. I may or may not uh, put a tinted lacquer on this. May just go clear because this stuff looks awesome. This is the red mahogany wood filler or grain filler from Oxford, also available through Solo. If you want that, or you want this kit, check out the Solo Music Gear link in the description. It's an affiliate link, helps me out if you pick something up through there. So as I said last time, I wanna do an amber type burst on the front of this. I wanna keep the front a lighter color, okay? And I'm gonna use Sol or, sorry, Oxford lacquers for that as well, also available through Solo. They've got uh, various color like packages that you can get now. With spray cans, you can get a kit to do pretty much any cool paint job you want on a guitar with that stuff. But anyway, moving on, what I'm gonna use for the front here is epoxy. I'm gonna do an eco epoxy fill. This is gonna harden up the front of this a little bit, the soundboard, make it a little brighter sounding. You know how it goes. So epoxy fill is the plan. That's what I've decided to go with. And eco epoxy makes a great epoxy. There's also, uh, there's a different epoxy available through Solo if you want it. I forget what exactly it's called, but just, just look it up. It'll be uh, under casting resin probably. So a eco epoxy is a nice clear epoxy, liquid plastic is basically the idea here. And it comes with a bunch, you can get mica tints for it, tints, powders, all sorts of stuff. It actually comes with, in this package, an assortment of these eco epoxy colored powders. I'm not gonna use any of those for this particular project because this is just grain filling. This stuff's very versatile. It can go do deep fills. Uh, you can get different kinds and everything. Um, for depths, but this is casting resin. So you can cast something to do like those cool river tables or even those guitars with the huge filled areas with these powders in them. For the purpose of this, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just doing a nice, clear, thin epoxy that I'm gonna spread along the top, let soak in, and then I'm gonna sand it smooth for our lacquer. That's all I have to do. So this is a two to one mix. I'm gonna get my mixing cup here. I'm gonna mix it up. I've got eight hours of open time for a thicker pour. This is gonna be thin, so it's gonna actually be much, much quicker. And I'm gonna let it set for cure for like 72 hours, which is the cure time for, again, a thicker pour. So it'll go way faster than that. But just to be safe, that's what I'm gonna do for this one as well. And then we'll come back to it, sand it, and we'll be ready to go. Let's get started. First things first here, we need to mix this up and, and mix it up well. It's a very simple two to one ratio. My, I guess, problem here was uh, the cup that I have is a paint mixing cup and I'm just grain filling the top of this thing. So I had to make, to use the two to one on this paint mixing cup, way too much, way, way too much of this. So I ended up filling a couple of other guitars as well. Uh, didn't make those as part of this video, of course, but it really doesn't take much. You'll see here as I do this, it's it's a small volume type operation. So consider using something like uh, a little measuring spoon, like a kitchen measuring spoon or something like that to get your two to one. Uh, that kind of thing is probably sufficient. Again, it's gotta be mixed well. So don't slack on that. It's kind of like shaking a, a paint can. You gotta put in the effort if you want it to work properly. If you don't mix it properly, it won't harden properly. You can see how this looks as it goes on. It well, it looks good to me. This is a lot like applying a clear coat. So you get this kind of slight darkening. The contrast of the grain increases slightly. Um, touch of a hue to it, but not really. This isn't like an ambering type thing. It's, it's a pretty clear finish. So there you go. You press it into the grain, similar to what you do with pretty much any other grain filler. Not everybody applies it this way, but this is how I like to do it. So I would use a you know, an old credit card or a squeegee if you've got one, a spatula, it doesn't really matter. The point is it needs to be spread and it needs to be pressed in a little bit if you can. And after that, it's just a matter of trying to get it relatively even. I'm running my finger along the binding here, making sure I don't have a whole bunch dripping down the sides because I can remove it, but I don't want to have to. And then I'm just spreading this out, you can see where it's been applied and where it hasn't, so you're not really at risk of missing a spot if you're paying any attention. And I just continue like this. What you don't want to do is put a ton of it on there and have a lot of extra. So if you watched my last video where I did the grain filling, I worked it in with a latex glove and I left it there. And I didn't spend a lot of time 
removing excess initially. I just let it dry in there and then I scraped and sanded it off. This stuff is a lot harder. So you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. You can see I'm, I'm putting some effort here into scraping off excess and making sure not only that I move it into the areas that need to be filled, but also that I take off most of what I don't need. This stuff isn't difficult to sand. It's, it's pretty easy to work with, luckily. Um, but it is casting resin. It is a two-part hardening item. And so ideally, you want to, it, it doesn't shrink a lot, which is nice. So ideally, you want to try and get it as close to level and you know pressed in as possible. You don't need a ton of it on the top. You don't have to worry about it working its way into the grain so far that you need to do round two, so to speak. Put enough of it on there to cover, but uh, yeah, not much more. You can see how little I'm applying here. I've just put a little bit more on there and I'm gonna move it around. And when I think I need more, if I think I need more, I just kind of dribble a little bit extra. But um, you can see the, the cup there on the left, it's still got almost the same amount of epoxy as it did when I started. So I ended up with a clear hockey puck at the end of this. That's really all there is to this. I've sped up the video a little bit here, but once you do that, you just let it dry and then it's ready to sand. We'll cover that as well in this video. Um, but it's a very quick process getting this grain filler done. And then all you've got to do is let it dry. And when you have finished letting it dry, here's what it'll look like. And so you can come back in and sand it. So I've got some 800 grit here, which I'm using because I'm going over this with transparent lacquer. So I'm not priming. I'm not really, I might seal. Uh, so I may actually sand this again quickly with 400 grit once I decide what exactly I'm doing. I don't really need to use a bunch of sealer on this now because the grain is filled so smoothly. You can see that kind of white powder as opposed to, you know, a wood grain powder. That's because of how how well sealed this is at this point. So I might do a quick coat of sanding sealer, which would mean I'll probably sand this just gently at uh, 400 or 600 grit. I have to make sure everything's nice and clean. I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a compressor there so I can blow out this micro mesh paper. This stuff is great, actually, in case anybody's looking for it. Merca, Merca um, has this, this micro mesh paper that, yeah, it, it doesn't clog up like a lot of sanding paper does. And so I like using that for this sort of thing. Uh, I have... A link to that, I think, in the Amazon link in the description. And that's about it. We uh, we get the front finish this way. We do our epoxy fill. And this is ready for the next step as soon as I finish sanding it. It looks good. Just needs to be cleaned and I can move on to finish. Uh, in the next video, we'll probably work on the fretboard. We'll get that sorted out. And then we will get the neck glued in place. And then it'll be time to go ahead and do the painting on this thing. So... As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of this series. Check out the solo link if you, if you want to. And uh, thanks again for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.